Howdy y'all. So the video I'm about to show you, as you can tell, um, was recorded months ago because right now it's snowing and cold. And when I recorded it, it was sunny and warm. Um, but I would wanted to share this video because I think it's got some good information. We're going to go over a CDL setup and a non CDL setup. However, because it's been like four or five months since I actually recorded this video, um, there's going to be some changes that I'm going to say, um, either things that I said that were wrong, um, which I'll correct th throughout the video, um, or what I've learned afterwards from um, using these setups. So make sure to stay tuned for the end of the video where I review the setups that I've been using um, for the past. Back to Ginger Hot Shot, all you hot shot fiends out there. So, I want to introduce you guys to the newest member of the fleet. This is number 103 right here. This is a Dodge Ram 5500. You guys have been watching the build. I'm going to take you through the setup and uh, show you what it's like. First thing, we'll go around the passenger side. So, we got the 5500 because we wanted to carry as much weight as possible. So, before you guys watch the end of this video, comment down below right now how much do you think and payload we can get on this truck number one number two go hit like and hit the notification bell so you can see our next video can i, can I put that plug in there Cody? yeah all right so first things first don't mind cody's mess in here but we got the bed set up we took out the passenger seat and the back seat so cody's long six foot ass can lay all the way across it here he can stretch out and have plenty of room to do his stuff um, the beer, that's, that's, that's for later. Ignore that. So. The shoots is the best, by the way. Um, on this side, we have, don't look at the code. Don't look at the code. It doesn't matter. But on this side, we got our Honda Run Flight 2000 watt generator. This is a little small, so it doesn't power too much, but we got a small AC. So, oh yeah, by the way, that's what it's connected to. This cord you see runs up through there into the cab. And I'm gonna go around to the other side and show you guys what we got going on. So that generator has holds one gallon of fuel and that'll run for eight hours. So the entire night, oh shit, there's more beer back here, Cody, fuck. Uh, the entire night, it'll power this AC. So even if Cody's down in the, in the middle of the Mojave Desert or somewhere and did the devil's asshole of Arizona. Then he's got nice cool air run all night and he doesn't have to idle the truck. So for about $3 a night, we can keep the truck air conditioned. Well, I guess a gallon of gas is like, what, $5? Yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, inflation. Yeah, and, and we installed the air intake for the AC. There, oh. Yeah, and the drip hole for the condenser. Yeah, so here, hand me the camera real quick. So you can see right here, we got the AC routed out through, there's, exhaust fins that come on the back of the cab so all you have to do is cut a little hole in the muffler right here this guy's hella fast okay anyways so yeah there's um soundproofing back here you just cut a hole in that and then you can blow it straight out of the exhaust vent so you know guys zoom it so this could be an entertaining video so anyways um the extension cords run in here and then the the um condensation hose runs out through the bolt hole right there so yeah that you got eight hours of cooling all night <laughs> also one thing the 2022 ram does not come with a brake controller and they don't even have an oem oh i oh, actually they don't have an oem brake controller for it so i bought this one from Mopar for a 1500 well it doesn't work um well we don't know actually if it works or not it might have worked 
Um, but Dodge didn't know what they were doing. So we ended up buying this aftermarket brake controller from Primus. I'll include a link for that in the description below. Um, and this thing works perfect. It's got a boost mode. So you can get a, you actually get a little bit of extra braking power out of this. So I actually suggest if you're going with one of these, ignore the OEM controller, even though it looks good, go with the aftermarket one. Uh, cause it functions a lot better. I mean, that's what we always had growing up on the ranch. Yeah. On cattle. Yeah. With our 5500. Go with the aftermarket cattle. Yeah. Or the aftermarket brake controller. Aftermarket brake controller. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, you know, I already showed you guys how I built the bed that you can check my other video for that. Um, but this is all done. So this is all custom built bed. You can get a prefab bed from like CM manufacturers that costs like probably $5,000 and adds a thousand pounds. Everything you see here on this truck adds, including the fuel, maybe 700 pounds. Like the steel itself isn't even a hundred. Um, the tank is maybe by itself is probably like 60 pounds. And then, cause it's an aluminum tank. So it probably doesn't even weigh that much. And then there's 60 gallons of fuel. So, and, and the fuel weighs like seven pounds a gallon. So um, that's all we got there. This is an RDS auxiliary transfer tank. Plus it's got the toolbox combo. People were raving about these. And I said, ah, nah, you don't need that. You need that. You need that for, uh, nice for, the, for that the in the description too. And it's um, gravity fed here. So we got a hose coming out of the auxiliary tank. Once Cody runs down to about a quarter tank, he just has to come here, flip that valve on through this Wix inline fuel filter. You see the fuel run, it goes down the hose and that hose runs along the inside of the frame. And then there's a T, it tees in to um, the main tank fuel right here. So it's it comes with a 50 gallon tank and then you got the 60 gallon auxiliary tank, so he can carry 110 gallons and go about a thousand miles on a tank. Um, the, the kit to put this in is actually really easy. It's from Nippon Asia on Amazon. I'll include a link for that as well below, um, but the, it's super easy to install. All you do is cut the filler neck, put the T in, tie it up and it works really well. And then you got these bad boys right here. This is the crowning jewel. Um, these polymer fenders we got off mytproducts.com. There'll be a link for that down below as well um, these are really easy they're just bolt on there's prefab holes uh, oval shaped holes in the frame and it comes with the hardware kit you just bolt it on the only bad thing about these is that they have to be freight shipped um, so you're gonna pay anywhere from a hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars just to get these sh shipped to wherever you want um, and they took about I want to say two I want to say they took about two weeks to arrive. So it, we actually didn't have to wait too long. I've, I've been waiting longer for other stuff. And then we got our trailer. Uh, this trailer is actually temporary. This is a PJ. Um, it's tw it's a 20,000, no, 25,000 pound rated trailer. And uh, it's this is a decent trailer. I would say for CDL, definitely go with this or bigger. Eventually we plan on getting a 53 foot step deck. That's going to be a 30 or a 40K trailer. And so we'll end up replacing this hitch. This is a Kurt 25K gooseneck ball. Um, it comes with, you have to get the rails. The rails you can just bolt directly to the frame. And then this is a, a drop-in spider gooseneck. This is rated for, this is only rated for 25,000. So if we had a trailer that was any bigger, uh, we'd have to swap this out. Eventually we're gonna swap it out for a fifth wheel. Um, and that's about it. You also have to get the, um, you have to get a wire, a wire in, what do you call this? Light harness? I mean, semi. Pigtail. It's pigtail yeah. yeah, so. Seven ways. Um, yeah, you have to get the seven way pigtail. You got to wire in um, the trailer lights, which isn't too hard. Um, right. The ram has the wires capped off at the end. Right and you just strip back each wires, put them in a connector, and then I wrapped the whole thing in electrical tape and we bolted it on right there. Um, other than that, I mean, the trailer's pretty normal. Uh, we got some buyer's toolboxes on the side. He's got two on each side, so those uh, allow him to uh, run pretty well. So this is our CDL setup. Now we're gonna go to our non-CDL setup, which is right over there. And I lied when I said that was the newest member of the fleet, because this truck is actually the newest member of the fleet. So that's a Dodge Ram 5500. This one right here is a Chevrolet 3500 HD. Both of these are 2022s. That truck we picked up for about 65,000. That trailer we picked up for about 18,000. This truck right here was actually 70, 
I want to say 75,000. So it ran about 10,000 more to have a regular truck versus the cabin chassis. And that one can actually haul more. But this is a non-CDL setup, so I'm cool with it. And then this trailer we picked up for 19,000. Um, and this is a Techstar uh, non-CDL 40 foot. Both these are 40 foot with the mega ramps on the back. Um, and this one is rated for 14,000. So one question I got for you guys that I need you to answer is that this trailer is rated for 14,000 and the truck's rated for 14,000. So in total, the GCWR on this rig is 28,000, but it's a non-CDL rig. So we're not running it past 26. So can you answer me, do I have to derate the trailer or do I just put a sticker on the side of my rig that says 26,000? To answer that question, um, it is does not qualify as non-CDL. So I lied a little bit um, in the beginning of this video when I said we we're gonna go over both rigs. It could qualify as a non-CDL rig if the trailer was derated to 12,000 pounds because that would make the total GCWR of the entire rig 26,000 pounds, which would classify as a non-CDL rig. However, that doesn't mean that you can drive it without a CDL, depending on which state you're in. I don't know. But anyways, we still got a couple of things to do with this one. But as you can see, if you look in here, um, this is actually really cool. I put a fifth wheel adapter on the gooseneck. So instead of the ball, we run with this Kurt 30K fifth wheel, which is way, it's overkill for this trailer. Um, but uh, it's honestly a really solid ride. I like it so much better than the gooseneck setup. Um, other than that, there's not too much done to this yet because we haven't had time. We just picked up the truck like four days ago. Um, but there will be a 75 gallon auxiliary fuel tank back here. And then uh, we gotta install some, um, some toolboxes on the trailer. But other than that, yeah, that's the setup. So non-CDL, CDL. They'll both run at $2 a mile. This, the payload on the non-CDL, we can get about 10,000 pounds in payload. So you see this load I got on right now, a couple of air conditioners. These are 1,500 a piece. So yesterday I was hauling these and a car. I got about, I had about 9,500 pounds on the pounds trailer. On the trailer. I was running in just about capacity, but that was from Reno to LA and back. So 900 miles, I ran $2.77 a mile, almost $3 a mile, non-CDL. This puppy over here, this is time to see if you guys guessed right. We can get a payload of about 25,000 pounds on that trailer. So most of the time you either get large loads that are light and they barely run for $2 a mile, or you get one load that's really he heavy that barely runs for $2 a mile, probably less than that. Now we can get two really heavy loads or a couple, a lot of light loads. Anyways, we can get a lot on that trailer and run it down the road and it will do great. So anyways, hit me up in the comments, answer some of those questions for me. Thanks for watching guys. So in conclusion, um, to review the setups, uh, I think I recorded that video uh, probably would have been late summer. Um, we bought that Ram back in July of 22, bought the Chevy, I want to say September of 22. And um, right now it's currently January 23. So happy new year, everyone. Um, and I'll be completely honest with you. Um, both of those rigs have broken down uh, like major, major breakdowns. The Ram needs a new transmission. Um, allegedly, um, the transmission cooler went out at 45,000 miles, um, headed east on 40 through New Mexico. Um, that one really sucked and they don't want to cover it under the warranty. Um, the Chevy broke down, um, going north through Wyoming and 40 below weather. And they still are currently assessing, um, and they have to tear down the engine to see if the problem is covered under warranty. Um, that really sucks. Um, we were running them both as CDL rigs the last couple months. Um, and one caveat I want to say about running that non CDL rig, let's say that you did derate, re, derate that trailer to 12,000 pounds and run it with that dually. Um, now your payload is probably 9,000 pounds. Um, that goes on top of the trailer plus what the trailer already weighs. Um, if it's rated for 12 K you in some States, a lot of States, you're going to need to have a CDL in order to operate that because, um, States like California, Nevada, 
and a lot of other ones um, require a CDL if your trailer weighs over 10,000 pounds. Um, and now you can go on the FMCSA and it says the same thing if the towing vehicle is rated for over 26,000 or like the total weight. Um, that is how I interpret it, but it is the states supersede that. So it is up to the state level. So you have to make sure you know where you're running. That being said, I know a lot of people that get away with it and they don't have the CDL. But um, if you roll through in a dually, they might ask you um, and they might hit you for it. So um, you have to keep that in mind. Um, as far as the 5500 goes, if I was doing it all over again, I would not have gotten the 5500. Um, the first reason is because I, the gear ratio on the 5500 is um, so low. I think you would call it low, uh, meaning that it um, takes more, it runs at a higher RPM to uh, move the tires, which creates a stronger diff with more, more torque, but also decreases your gas mileage and runs your uh, vehicle at a higher RPM. Um, which is going to result in more wear and tear, um, especially if you're highway driving. Um, that thing had a max speed of like 80 miles an hour. It did not go any faster. So if you, you really, your ideal running speed is like 55, you know. Um, so running it at like 60 is going to be an issue. So what's better, CDL or non-CDL? Which makes more money? Um, well, I'll tell you the way that a lot of brokers work is that they view anything under 10,000 pounds as a partial load. Um, so, and they don't like to pay a lot for partial loads. Um, and then uh, they are hard to budge on the non-CDL loads. Um, that being said, there's instances like I outlaid, um, lined out earlier in this video where you can put the parcels together and you can make the money. Um, it really just depends on how you structure it. I would say with either of them, it's difficult to make the money on the load board. Um, it's really a good idea to go out and get those direct shipper contracts, at least one or two that keep you consistently busy. Um, and then you can supplement with load boards. The uh, cool thing about running the CDL, especially with the 5500, is you're not as worried about weight. You're definitely not worried about weight distribution. Um, but after running these rigs and having major breakdowns, I have to really think about the fact that these trucks weren't really designed to be running fully loaded. Now, yes, according to the axle weights, you can make it work out, right? And even with the new 2023 Ford, they're advertising a towing capacity of 400,000 pounds, or not 400,000, 40,000 pounds, right? Wow, that's amazing, right? However, you have to ask the question, how long can it tow 40,000 pounds for? Uh, they had a Toyota Tundra that towed a space shuttle, um, but it only towed it like across the bridge. So it probably would have blew up if it towed it any further. Um, I don't know, you know, maybe I've probably had a little bit of bad luck with the breakdown. Our maintenance program has been pretty good. I mean, every 10,000 miles we're changing oil. Um, every 20,000 miles we're doing fuel filters. Um, we're doing constant inspections and, and work. Um, I think that it's a good idea if you're going to be a truck driver, even if it's just hot shot to be on the road, that you should have your CDL and it will help you cover your ass in the case of um, states like California that require you to have it if your trailer is over 10,000 pounds. Um, that being said, I don't think that necessarily means that you need to run the CDL. And it depends on what type of contracts that you can do. Um, but if you run non-CDL and you have that load capacity of, of nine or to 10,000 pounds um, and you are able to find contracts and loads that work for you, that pay the money, whether it's piecing together partials or finding big bulky light loads like the corrugated piping, insulation, um, there's um, brewery tanks, like there's a few different things that are big and bulky, but light. Um, and sometimes they pay well. And a lot of times over dimension loads also are going to be light, but they're going to be big. And so they're going to pay because you're going to need the equipment and the permits and the know-how and all of that.
which one's better, that's tough to say. If you asked me when I filmed this video, I would have said hands down, go to CDL route. And that was our theory. We made all of our trucks CDL. Um, and that it was like, okay, we don't have to worry about the weight as much. Um, we can make more money. We'll just load the shit out of these trucks. Um, but it's not necessarily good on them. Um, and I, you'll notice that earlier in the video, I said that our plan was to get a step deck for that Ram um that and rated at 30 or 40k so we could put a ton of weight on it and i'm really glad that we ended up not doing that because i'm pretty sure it would have destroyed the truck it sounds like the truck's already pretty pretty messed up and the most we've put behind it um truck and trailer combined the most we've put behind it is uh 25 000 pounds so um you guys feel free to let me know what you think um whether or not i'm right i'm not really giving you an answer to go cdl or not cdl um, you really have to look into it and decide for yourself uh, based on the equipment that you have. Um, but I definitely would suggest if you're going to go CDL, avoid just because you're on CDL doesn't mean that you should go the route of taking heavy ass loads. Um, and because the lighter the load, the less gas that you spend, the less wear and tear there is. Um, and not to mention with the non-CDL, some of the advantages are you don't have to pay IFTA, um, which on average with the two trucks, we've probably done about paid an extra $400 a quarter on top of what you pay at the pump. Because when you go to a truck stop and you pay at the pump, you're paying more for fuel than you would if you just went to the regular gas station. And um, <laughs> you also don't have to worry about getting permits in New Mexico um, and you don't have to worry about getting permits in Oregon. Um, you don't have to worry about getting a Kentucky unit number. Um, I'm not sure about New York. Um, but anyways, so I'm going to cut it short now. Um, if you guys want to know, I'm going to share another video soon that's going to go over more in depth of the current status of my hotshot business. Um, so please look out for that and check that out. Um, if you've got any feedback or comments, anything you would like to include, drop it down below. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.